Hello there, Reject Nation. We're gonna watch The Last of Us 2 State of Play PS4 trailer, or whatever this is. It's a 23 minute video. I was looking through the comments. I saw that there are so many people who are requesting a reaction for this. This actually came out a few days ago, so I know this is late, but hey, we're here now. That's what matters. is different. All right, there's that's, that's a mood right there. <laughs> I know you wish things were different. <laughs> Love that they keep starting with that line. <laughs> You know what? I'm excited to play. I don't care. I'm excited to check this out. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow. To do this smart, we'd be leaving Jackson vulnerable. So they just get to get away with this? Mm -hmm. How'd you find us? I'm Neil Druckmann. Hi, Vice Neil. President of Naughty Dog and the director of The Last of Us Part Two. We're just a few weeks away from launch on June 19th, when the game will finally be in your hands. Mm -hmm. The wait has been long, and we're extremely grateful for your patience, especially now in the midst of these unprecedented and challenging times. We hope you're all taking care of yourselves, and that you, your friends, and your loved ones are doing well. Because of these extraordinary circumstances, we can't be together in this final stretch and share the experience like we usually would. So today we're trying something different. Okay. Something we've never done before. All right. I'm listening. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to give you an in-depth look into what awaits you in The Last of Us Part Two, including new details about the gameplay experience and story. And to cap it all off, we'll be showing a never before seen lengthy gameplay sequence. Really? You'll definitely want to stick around for that. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm supposed to take her to the Fireflies and walk away. Mm. They were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. It would kill her. The Last of Us Part 2 picks up Ellie and Joel's story several years after the events of the first game. Ellie and Joel have settled in Jackson, Wyoming, amongst a thriving community of survivors. Okay. With the threats of the world kept outside the town's walls, Jackson has been able to find relative peace and even stability. Ellie is now 19, lives on her own, and has been able to forge lasting relationships within the community. Scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate our kiss from last night? No, we're gonna do that. However, this peace is short lived. Jackson and Ellie suffer a violent and traumatizing event. 
Ellie sets off back into the treacherous outside world in search of retribution and justice. Her journey will take her to new parts of the country previously unexplored in The Last of Us. Look how beautiful that detail is. The story spans multiple seasons and climates, hmm. from the snow-capped mountains of Jackson to the lush Pacific Northwest. Cool. Each introduces a wide range of exterior and interior environments for you to navigate and explore, rendered in meticulous detail and unprecedented scale with the latest iteration of the Naughty Dog engine. Our goal was to make these environments not only beautiful, but feel as grounded and authentic to the cities they're based on as possible. I think you have succeeded. Much of the story unfolds in what remains of Seattle, a massive former quarantine zone. Its locales are incredibly diverse, spanning a dense city center with a skyline of towering high-rises to the beautiful suburbs and stormy waterfronts that surround it. The city exhibits drastic shifts in architecture, elevation, and weather. A shot felt a little crafty. And... New traversal mechanics that afford greater exploration and ways to navigate threats. Ellie is not only able to climb and jump over gaps, but she can use ropes to scale vertical terrain or swing over obstacles, allowing you to discover new areas, resources, and side narratives. These more open environments also create new strategic considerations in combat, whether it's to get the jump on enemies or bypass them entirely. The Last of Us Ooh, Park can't features some of the largest environments we've ever created. <laughs> Horseback riding will allow Ellie to quickly cover some of these expansive terrains. That horse is going to die, some isn't it? Are so flooded that a boat is I'm not saying that's a leak. I just feel like it's going to happen. However, the world of The Last of Us is as lush and inviting as it is deadly. As Ellie uncovers the path to finding those who have wronged her, she must face the many threats of this unknown city. In the wake of the pandemic and the fall of the quarantine zone, Seattle has become a war zone where two warring factions find themselves in an ongoing conflict for territory and resources. Okay. One of these groups is the Washington Liberation Front, otherwise known as the WLF. Okay. The WLF are a militia group that began as resistance to the military occupation of Seattle and eventually wrestled huh. control of the city from them. They are highly trained, organized, and well-equipped with weapons they stole from the army. They occupy much of the city imprisoning or killing trespassers on site. Hey, we got another trespasser. A girl. Did you see her? <laughs> on the other side of this bloody conflict is a group of religious zealots called the Seraphites, or Scars, defined by the self-inflicted deep cuts that they bear across their faces. Like the WLF, they're deeply tribalistic and territorial. They're known for being stealthy, using overgrowth as cover, and they use more silent weapons like bows and arrows. Clipper wings. <laughs> but beyond this conflict among survivors, the threat that originally brought the world to its knees is very much present. Every human is in danger of falling victim to the infected. There are the recently so infected runners who are more numerous and aggressive in this game. The blind but extremely deadly clickers, and the stalkers who sneak and hide until they're ready to attack. Surprising Dude, persons there's... with extreme agility and brutal violence. I I suck at the last beating of us part two the introduces new stages of infected, such as the shamblers. Large, heavily armored enemies that are covered in pustules. Upon getting close to you, they expel a corrosive spore cloud that burns its victims. But our most terrifying and lethal new forms of infected will have to wait until you play the game for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Overcoming these uh, threats with the sound will require careful consideration of how you approach every combat encounter and how you leverage Ellie's unique skills, equipment, and the environment to your advantage. Let's get in there. The WLF patrol the streets of Seattle with guard dogs, which are capable of detecting and following you, even while in cover. You think this guy's connected to oh. They can pick up your scent and alert their handlers to your presence. Oh. Listen mode will reveal your scent trail, so keep moving and cause distractions to avoid detection. Oh man, that is... 25 years after the pandemic began, I'm, I'm gonna suck the world at that. is completely overgrown. Use tall grass to hide from enemies and go prone to stay out of sight. 
However, this form of analog stealth means you're never fully hidden. If enemies get close enough, they can discover you, even in grass. Yeah, of course. When Ellie is overwhelmed, running away is a viable option. And you can also break class or crawl through tight spaces Sweet. to find new paths or areas to evade or take on your enemies. In any given combat situation, you can flee an encounter and re-establish stealth to regain the advantage. If you absolutely have to fight your way out, there are a variety of tools at your disposal. Ellie's more agile than most of her enemies. She can sprint and quickly dodge incoming attacks. Learning how opponents attack with different weapons and mastering the timing of your dodges will prevent you from taking damage and create opportunities to counterattack. You can use throwable items or well-placed shots to stun enemies before dealing with killing blow. Or using them as a shield to protect yourself or buy some time to figure out the next move. I love all the dialogue in between. Oh my god. <laughs> Ellie isn't always alone on her journey. Allies will take part in helping you navigate the environments, spot enemies, and meaningfully help you in combat encounters. Between the human survivors and the roaming infected, there will be times where multiple threats are present, creating new strategic considerations and opportunities. You can choose whether to attack these opponents separately and directly, or find ways to pit them against each other. Oh, that's smart. That's really smart. They fight or wait until their numbers have thinned out and engage with whomever's left. Get out to be brutal, run in, headstrong, or just pit them against each other. That's neat. Our right. goal is to attention to detail is crazy. Coupled with deep systems that give you greater control and influence over your journey. Can you read the whole magazine? As you play, you'll be able to invest in a broad collection of crafting items, weapon, and player upgrades through training manuals scattered throughout the environment and scavenging for ingredients. These skills and upgrade manuals cater to a variety of playstyles, and the choices you make will create your own distinct experience. We also wanted to extend that agency and personalization to your weapons through our new workbench system. Scavenge for parts to modify and improve your weapon's performance and attributes, all of which are visualized and become part of your character. Survival will also require using the parts and ingredients that you'll find in the environment, which can be Aww. crafted into a wide range Man. of defensive and offensive items. I don't want to have like to shoot a guard mines, dog, though. Explosive arrows, pistol suppressors, and more. these gameplay systems are meant to immerse you in the world and make you feel in lockstep with Ellie's emotional journey. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I was I was just saying, like, even in the gameplay of just what we're teasing, you can still feel the cinematic of, uh, As we've said quality before, of it all. This is Naughty Dog's largest, most ambitious game. It may seem like we covered a lot, but we only scratched the surface of what it's like to play The Last of Us Part 2. We can't wait for you to experience it all for yourself in June 19. Until then, here's an extended sequence of never before seen gameplay. Yeah. Enjoy. Okay, so this is supposed to be like eight minutes long or something. Hmm. 
It's interesting how the camera doesn't go down, it doesn't cut into the water instead. I don't remember if it's like that in the last game, to be honest. I just noticed most games will like follow the camera within, and this does like a cut. How does your bow and arrow not get, like, ruined with all that water damage? I'm no archer. I don't know. <laughs> Give me the fucking scent. Hands up. Is that a Sony product placement? Where is she? In the hospital. We're in the hospital. Yeah, they're clearing out the upper floors. She's somewhere in there. Oh. Lucky you. Us to retake all of downtown. I heard we might take the fight for them. <laughs> no way. Not after what went down last time. Even Isaac isn't that crazy. That's what I heard. You know, she keeps giving you guys heads up, and, and you, you just keep forcing her to kill you guys. This is like one of those rare games where I could just watch like the gameplay and like not even play. <laughs> no, poor doggy. Poor doggy. <laughs> but I bet when I'm playing, I'm gonna try to murder all those dogs because you know they're gonna get me in trouble. just the humans. This is not even the infected characters. <gasps> Hurry! Hell yeah. 
<laughs> so cool. Boom. Oh. Owie. cockroach and, and hear the other way. Mm. Tell us where she went. When Isaac talks to us about this, I'm getting tired of this. Nora. Nora! I'm not going down for her, man. It's finally coming. And there's been nothing bad that's happened along the way. <laughs> ah, that was beautiful. Beautiful. So excited. Can't wait to see if I'm disappointed by story element parts or if I'm really happy with overall execution. All right, guys, well, just to make it clear, I'm not gonna talk about any of the leaks uh, in this discussion. I'm just gonna strictly talk about more of what was teased here, what was shown here. I'm still very excited for the game. The mood, the tone, the real lived-in experience, it seems like that's like the main thing they wanted to go for in developing this game was to make it feel as not just, like he said here, not just beautiful, but also grounded and as close to reality as possible. I do find it kind of ironic, you know, you hear words like pandemic and stuff like that in, in here, uh, in the in the world of The Last of Us while we're going through like a real life pandemic, not as bad, I mean, it's, it's bad in real life, but it's not as, you know, bad as like having things like runners and clickers uh, existing in the world today. Bit of irony that one of the most anticipated games of all time and now like a very controversial game coming out during this time in the world. But what we're seeing here, I love all the enhancements of all the stealth abilities and then the enhancements of danger that they've brought to the gameplay, which makes it all the more intense. So it's like while you're getting enhancements on being able to do stealth, it also makes it a little bit harder to sneak around like when you're trying to avoid the dogs who can pick up on your scent, things like that. Because that was kind of one of my uh, quarrels like with uh, Metal Gear Solid, because they did Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation, which didn't have as much gameplay abilities as when they did Metal Gear Solid 2. Then they re-released Metal Gear Solid 1 on GameCube, but you were able to do all the gameplay maneuvers that you can do in Metal Gear 2. So it made playing Metal Gear Solid that much easier because it didn't really enhance uh, the danger threat level of your enemies in the video game. Whereas here, they're increasing that. They're even saying like the run
runners have uh they're, they they come at you a lot more aggressive and in higher numbers so while you can do a little bit more the challenges will still be equally matched which is something i'm very much uh excited for what they're gonna do like the gameplay the mechanics uh the graphics everything involved that was a ps vita was it that was a p i'm just now realizing that 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 asian girl who held least down in the throat i'm <laughs> the, the, i just got a flash <laughs> in my head of the the song because i love those details that you see in movies when you kill a character who's listening to a song or whatever on, on like a ipod or something and then when it falls over the the song is still playing and that just flashed in my head uh yeah is it vita vita I don't know, I'm getting too hung up on it now. If this is taking place in the future, the PSV, <laughs> those still survived? The thing I'm not looking forward to are uh, the the animal deaths. Granted, I'm a big fan of the Red Dead games. I know you gotta kill plenty of animals there. That moment where they, the dog gets set on fire and you hear it whimpering, that just is it sounds so heartbreaking. I appreciate all the realism this game is going for, but man, I thought it's a little bit haunting. And you just know that horse is definitely gonna die at some point. It looks cool to ride around on and everything, but you just know it's gonna die. I love of the tease that they're giving of a new kind of next level infected monster that you're gonna have to go up against. All you do is hear the sound effects of it. <laughs> Honestly, I suck at beating anything past a runner. Even a runner, I have a hard time with. Flicker, Stalker, all those, they're, they're very, very difficult for me to beat. I just know that whatever new monster they have in store is just gonna be a pain in my ass. I'm gonna be getting very mad. I can also imagine while watching a gameplay like this, uh, that it can be frustrating for some people because this is more along the lines of how I'd probably play The Last of Us on my own time. But there's people who are much more completionist who want to look around and want to pick up everything around them. Like when my girlfriend Olivia is watching me over my shoulder, if I'm just trying to move the plot forward and move to the next room or something, she gets very irritated at me because she's one of those people. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are like, I got to explore every little opening and pick up as much as I possibly can and take the time to upgrade for a gameplay trailer you're gonna wanna keep all the cool stuff in here, so you're not gonna get all that. The word that keeps coming back to mind uh, when watching this is lived in. Like even the little bits of dialogue that you get in between, you're holding people up, all the swear words that are happening, the banter back and forth, all the dialogue feels very natural. I bet that with every single, every you like die and then you have to redo beating some of these bad guys again, the dialogue will perhaps even uh, change up here and there. And then what they're talking about with these two main territorial groups with the WLF and I think they said Seraphites Ser or scars for an another nickname for them or something. I love the contrast between them. WLF seems a lot more what like the kind of groups that we might have seen in the first Last of Us. And then the scars, they seem very tribal and their methods seem a lot more savage. It always, it's always way more brutal with like cutting people up and using bows and arrows, things that slice into you as opposed to, you know, gunshot wounds. Anytime I see footage of them, they irk me, it, it, it scares the crap out of me. I played The, the Last of Us only one time a, a, like a couple of years ago, so there's some details I'm missing. I feel like I'm probably gonna end up watching one of those cinematic cutscenes you know, compilations just so I'm like really truly refreshed on everything because I don't have time to play the whole game all over again. There's something in my brain that's telling me Ellie couldn't swim in the first game. But here she's clearly swimming and she's great at it. I mean, yeah, she's grown up, she can do it now. I'm not gonna talk about any of the leaks, all right? Now, what I'll say to acknowledge that though is if you happen to have heard the leaks and if you had a negative response to certain plot things that you heard happen in the game, I would say still give it a chance. With almost anything that decides to be bold or ambitious or take their story in a new direction that I've seen, at least in, in the movie sphere or TV sphere, sometimes, I mean, when, when it does happen, it, people get really mad and they don't like the different take or direction or the subversion of expectation that happened. And then sometimes with good execution, people can love the way it, it developed and how surprising it was. The analogy I, I'll use for that just off the top of my head would be, and this is in no way implying any actual thing that occurs <laughs> in The Last of Us 2. I'm just, I'm just making that clear. A subversion of expectation, the way they handled The Last Jedi. That that didn't go down so well with so much of the fandom, right? Whereas opposed to like, there's the movie Avengers Endgame where something happens with Thanos in the first like 10 minutes of the movie that totally surprised people, but people for the most part seem to really love that movie. I remember every time I uh, watch in the theaters, 
people were like, oh, what? That, that, that's like what they do with Thanos in the first 10 minutes, especially with Endgame. <laughs> if you look at what happened in the first 10 minutes there, if that leaked, people would probably be really upset about that leak and would have been like, I can't believe they did that. They're ruining Marvel, MCU, or trying to subvert expectations. I'm not saying that with whatever you guys might have heard with The Last of Us, if ultimately by playing it, you'll be like, all right, never mind. Even though I heard the leaks and then they, they kind of upset me now that I'm actually able to play it, I like it. I'm not saying that will ultimately be the outcome for everyone or the majority. I, I really have no idea. I might fall into the camp of not liking the way the plot unfolds ultimately. I would say though, especially when you watch a, a state of play trailer like this, give the game a chance. Just for the gameplay and mechanics alone that they and the, and the labor of love that went into developing and crafting this, just give it a chance. You know, if you end up not liking it, I'm sorry, <laughs> but hey, it's worth a shot. That's that's where that's where I stand right now. All right, guys. Well, what'd you think of the state of play trailer? Leave your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. Can't wait for this game. I'll see you guys soon.